from the mistakes of going pretty fast here and we're filming with a potato that's why it's all choppy Yeah, it was a little too close for my comfort. Uh, do you guys ride like this? Because I don't like riding like this. I like to ride uh, nice and safe. I like to ride nice and smart and making sure that I'm understanding these hazardous situations. So uh, remember, when we're talking about planning a ride, we're talking position, locating, but assessing relevant threats. Right now, road, area, not a relevant threat. You're the relevant threat. You're the problem. How do we navigate you being the threat? Let's go ahead and slow it down just a little bit. But one thing that we can take away from this that is actually kind of a good thing, because obviously the audio is terrible, but uh, the good thing here is that this is a great escape path. This is something that we can totally use when we're on a motorcycle. It's not something that I would definitely do all the time. I don't want to be in a position to where I have to do this kind of stuff. But if we're in a vehicle, like oh, not a vehicle, if we're in a car, we wouldn't be able to do this. The big problem here is that, geez, yeah, that was quick. That's what she said. Uh, right here, you know, thankfully, you know, we, we are on motorcycles because if this was a car passing the other car, you know, the mo other motorcyclist go ahead and circle the guy so that we know what we're talking about. So if we were that, per or if the, that person was the hazard and it was a car, we would be dead. If we were a car, that motorcyclist would be dead. If we were both cars, we'd both be dead. We would probably both be dead no matter what. So the problem here is we're putting ourselves in these bad situations because we are the threat. Let's not be the threats on the road. Let's not be threats to ourselves. The road is already dangerous enough when it comes to motorcycle riding. Let's not add to that danger, okay? So when we talk about it's not if but when, well, it's because the motorcyclists are putting themselves in that danger. Head first down one. Anyway, stupid old man not looking while changing three lanes and he beeps at me. There he's switching. Gazing in your lane. Blind spot, blind spot, blind spot, blind spot. Don't fight for it. Roll off that Whoa. throttle. Do some progressive braking. Don't try to grab their attention because they're idiots. What? That guy honked at you? Well, I guess you did say that in the uh, opening right there. Yeah, you wish you flipped them off. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The main thing here that we need to be focusing on is not acting like this guy, but the main thing that we need to be focusing on is recognizing this hazardous situation, uh, planning our ride. Planning a ride is pretty much the thing that you need to be doing. So you get plan your ride. You notice how it's different colors. If you don't know what these are, we talk about this in the MTC Rider Academy. These are color code stages. As a firefighter and as a man, I can only really understand colors and patterns. So the colors, if you didn't know, they are on the wall up here in the MTC Rider Academy. Um, yeah, so yellow stage, we are zoned in. We're prepped and ready, just kind of enjoying our ride. Orange stage, we see something coming up. It's a hazardous situation, so lots of traffic like this is a hazardous situation, intersection and corners. Then yeah, when we go into red stage, we have to actively do something. We have to swerve, we have to emergency brake, we have to either accelerate out into an escape path, we have to do something. There's a lot of, a lot of words. Let's go ahead and bring that up here so you can actually see that. Let's go ahead and put that back on the board. So an escape path, you're planning your ride. Now, when it comes to a brown stage, you're just like, you, you panicked. You got a little poo-poo in your pantalones and that's not something you wanna do. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what happens here. And we're going to start recognizing these patterns and these hazardous situations. So we're in orange stage right now. We're covering the brakes. Okay, we're looking for escape paths. We see somebody crossing a lane. Not a big deal right now. We're not in their path of travel. It's okay, but you start to see people not being in their spots. This guy does not know how to color within the lines, so we need to watch out for them. They're probably eating the crayons. We're getting up to here. We rolled off the throttle. Very good. That's that engine braking. We're kind of getting ourselves prepped and ready. Weight's on that front tire so we can squeeze that brake and get more traction. Okay, we still see it. We still see it. Now, that person's nose, you notice how it's not pointing. It's not pointing like towards the back of this Prius, which is usually the problem. It's not pointing straight to that. It's kind of pointing this way. Okay, once they do this, you know, going into the lane, I feel pretty confident that's the direction they're going. If their nose is still pointing this way, I'm confident they're still going this way. So that's when you start to really understand that pattern. Okay, remember colors and patterns here, guys. He Recognized it. You start to understand this uh, subconsciously. Now let's start doing the conscious movements of rolling up the throttle, applying the brakes. Don't fight for the lane, law of gross tonnage, lug nut rule, whatever you want to call it. Write in the comments what you do, you know, how you call it. Uh, they're going to win. You know, it's like a, a sumo wrestler um, and like a little kid trying to run into it. A little kid's going to bounce. We're going to bounce off these vehicles. We're going to be the ones hurt. The vehicle's not going to hurt because it doesn't have any feelings. So don't fight for the lane. At this point, roll up the throttle, let them in. Just let them in. Let them in. They suck. They're in a car. Terrible day for them. We're having a great time. We're on a motorcycle. Let's protect ourselves. Anyways, here we go. We are driving in a car. Nav man going 105 kilometers per hour, never adjusting that speed. 
Oh, look at those road surface hazards. Ooh. Oh. Oh. No. Ew. Oh, no. What happened there? Terrible cone maintenance. You know, he, the drills for that motorcycle can't handle the cone. So if you guys want to, go ahead and get the uh, Smart Rider drill booklet. Uh, we got some cone drills. What happened? Okay, be a little bit better than this motorcycle on a trailer. <laughs> How did that happen, guys? For those of you, I don't trailer my motorcycle because uh, I'm, a, I'm a real motorcyclist. So I just travel everywhere. I'm just kidding. I don't have a truck. I don't have a hitch or anything like that. But don't you guys put chains on it? I mean, I at least know that. You know, it's not just the hitch, but there's chains, all these things. So when we hit that, hopefully the chain kind of holds on to it. How did this happen? Oh, Let no. me know. How did this happen? Ew. Write in the comments. Here we go. <laughs> Louis in the 303. Very hanging out on some uh, trailer sack. Trailer. High speed. I'm curious what they think in this whole situation. Ooh. A little Coleman bike. There you go. Tractor supply store. There we go. Having some trouble there. Okay, it's a Prius, right? Not a big deal. What happened? Whoa, dude! You're pissed? You're in the street. Hit his foot. Okay, I can see the adrenaline. Acting like an idiot, though. Dude, very embarrassing. Um, go look in the mirror. And, uh... Put yourself in timeout, okay? <laughs> so we're in the street. It's kind of weird, huh? How you get hit when you're in the street, right? Well, I just told you what I think about it. Yeah, you got hit in the foot. Well, that's not a Prius. That's a Nissan. Okay. Well, it's a Sentra. Whatever. Or whatever. Anyways, uh, don't be in the street, idiot. And then now you're doing this. Hope you feel better. I hope you get in trouble. You know, kind of a dumb move to be posting this online, your criminal act online. Hit my foot. All right, Jurgen Bewalda. Interesting name. Rain. Okay, we got hazardous situations. We're going to be in orange stage because we're in a roundabout with lots of hazards. What's going to happen here? Losing traction. There it is. Uh, so, Rain. You know, we have lots of trash and probably cold tires. Um, didn't accelerate too hard. Maybe hit some, some oil or something, some gravel that we can't see. So this is a possibility. So as smart riders, make sure that we are acquiring and using personal protective equipment. These are the principles that we follow every time we go out for a ride. Great job lifting that motorcycle up. You know, proper lifting technique. All legs, no back. Very good. But yeah, make sure you wear full gear just in case something like this happens. You never know. Good job with that car driver blocking traffic. Very nice, very nice. Okay, Irish Trash 5. Hey, this is my lane. Okay, here we go. This looks like California. We are using our quad lock, which is great. Okay, we got cut off. Good job rolling off the throttle, doing some progressive braking. Very good, very good. We have an open escape right there, open lane, good line of sight, gonna accelerate through, very good. Switch over real quick so you can increase that space cushion from all the vehicles to the right. Hey, they handled it pretty well. So this is that open lane pattern, okay? We just have an opportunity for a vehicle to come in front of us. Not a big deal. We saw it happening. Okay, they have the indicator. We're gonna go ahead and apply progressive braking. Or even just rolling off the throttle at highway speeds will we'll get you in, in this kind of a safe spot. Good space cushion. And yeah, you notice how we're in a good line of sight. So great job planning your ride. Okay, good position. Located it. Assessed that it was a relevant threat. Navigated it by just rolling off the throttle. Not panicking, not fighting for the lane, not punching mirrors like the idiot just in the previous video. None of that stuff. Doing pretty good. Close call, my fault. Okay. Accepted it. Accepted the whole situation. Once again, everybody check out... Whoa! I was about to do a quad lock ad spot. we got to get back into this. Oh. Chowder 1433. So when it comes to uh, merging onto interstates or merging onto uh, freeways, the real hazards here are road surface hazards because of the high speed that we're doing, and then merging. Okay, there's no cross traffic unless you have deer or somebody just, you know, making a huge mistake going across the median in their car. Uh, so here, definitely just going to be merging issues, high speed 
Um, and then, you know, rear ending and getting rear ended. So it's not going to be a lot of that cross traffic, but still merge areas here, whether you're on the interstate already and people are merging in or you're merging into an interstate, you're going to be in orange stage. So make sure you do your head check. We did a mirror check. Not bad, not bad, but we didn't do enough of a head check until last second. So do it before you turn. Okay. Not when you're turning. I get it. It's like a habit where you marry the two and you just do it at the same time. Wow. Remember to separate the two. Okay, okay. That person, intersections, should be prepped and ready. Found the escape. Whoa. It looked like he almost crashed, but I think that just might be the 360. Okay, so here we go. We're coming up to here, orange stage. We see the intersection. You know, way up here, we see that right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it might be a stale green light, because it did turn yellow when we got up to there. So if it's a stale green light, if it's been green for a while, just anticipate it's probably going to go yellow possibly go red. Sometimes it's safer to even go through a red light, okay? I'm not recommending it, but sometimes it's safer to do that than to try to stop really fast and possibly lose traction and crash. We're getting up to here, we see that person crossing multiple lanes. More than likely, you're gonna wanna get in that left lane. We're in the middle, very good. Okay, we see this happening. Okay, remember we're planning a ride. We see it happening, seeing it happening. We start to rev bomb, that's the reaction, okay? Rev bomb, maybe, I think it was more like a downshift. That's what it sounded like, which is good. Coming up to the intersection. Downshifted. And then now we're gonna have to do something because this person took our path of travel. We have to find an escape path. This is something very important to do because if not, we're gonna crash right into the back of them. So where is the opening happening? Onto the right side. So go ahead and move from center to right. Okay, if you move from center to left, you're just gonna go into the back of the vehicle because that's the direction they're going. We see this, and if you notice that we didn't even have to switch lanes. Wouldn't recommend rev bombing though. We didn't have to switch lanes, we just have to find that small gap. Okay, so practice these movements. Understand that you are a very agile creature on these motorcycles, okay? Just don't put yourself in such a bad spot to be so close, okay? All right, Nebraska rider, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Careful, you can see that the biker coming off the white lane goes into an unevenness on the road and immediately uneven control of the bike. We talk about uneven roads in the MTC Rider Academy. Oh, there it is. Oh, high side. And his head fell off. Hopefully, how did he get the camera footage of his head fell off? Oh, he's there. Okay, he looks pretty cool. I like the white and black. It's a good aesthetic. Okay, so we talk about this uh, in the MTC Rider Academy. The MTC Rider Academy is uh, the academy that we have. Okay, we have a Smart Rider Basic Training, which we're updating into the Basic Rider course. Uh, it's Right now, it's three hours long. You get the digital version of the Smart Rider Motorcycle Drills. Um, you get a whole bunch of stuff, downloadables of the rescue uh, booklet, lots of stuff, $4.99, $4.99. Anybody in the world can, can download this or, or join the academy. It's not United States only. Uh, so we're coming up to here, we talk about this uh, uneven pavement, okay? So that's going to really grab your uh, motorcycle tires and kind of jostle it a little bit, especially in the middle of a turn. It's going to screw you up. So how do we prevent this? Don't get so close to the line. So maintain that middle, middle, middle versus like, oops, I cut in a little bit too hard. Okay, so this is kind of what happens when we do outside, inside, outside. We're not racing here. We're going through an, a freaking turn before an intersection and under a bridge. We're not on a track. Stay middle, middle, middle. Maintain the speed to do middle, 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 and go on with your day. If there's a road surface hazard in the middle, just switch over real quick and go back to the middle. But if we hit that, ooh, we're in a bad spot. And for what? There's nobody in front of us, nobody behind us. We're not racing anybody. We're not getting any prizes. We're not a professional commuter here. We're not getting paid for this. I just want to get home. But this is a mistake. This is what happens sometimes. And this is why we wear full gear and we acquire and use personal protective equipment. This is the, these are the principles that we follow here at the MTC Rider Academy and possibly rescue each other. Bash 041. Okay, good line of sight. Okay, you might have to switch lanes. It's open lane right here, right? We're switching open lane. Okay, we're finding, whoa, 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 whoa. Impact, impact. Is that a Prius again? I swear. I swear. So this is a typical uh, pileup. The vehicle in the front slowed down, um, and then the vehicle behind that vehicle almost hits the first vehicle. There's four vehicles involved, basically. The third vehicle hits that uh, second vehicle, and the last vehicle, this vehicle, sandwiches that third vehicle. So let me go ahead and explain that a little bit better here because it's kind of hard to describe without using visuals. This person right here slammed the brakes because they weren't paying attention because this person was slowing down. This person slams the brakes and wasn't paying attention and gets extremely close to this person. 
This person slams the brakes but doesn't make it in time and hits this person. This person now has front end damage. This person wasn't paying attention either, now runs into the back of this person. So this person in the middle gets front end, rear end damage. This person gets front end damage. This person gets rear end damage. And then there's a bunch of squigglies on the, on the board. So that's a big problem. This is what happens typically. So as motorcyclists, this is where we kind of come in. So if we are right behind this vehicle, let's say we're behind this vehicle and we're riding right behind them and we're just basically anticipating what they're doing. If they break, we'll break. Okay, we're not really looking ahead. We're not riding our own ride. We slam the brakes. We're doing good. We don't hit the person in front of us. Very good. Awesome. This person hits us in the back. Then now we hit the person in front. And then the person behind that person hits that person that hits, our per hits us. And then we get sandwiched and we die. It's very important to put ourselves in a line of sight in a better position for safety so this doesn't happen. Are we going to rescue? What's that? You got hit? Yeah. Um, I'm recording. Grab yourself a rescue pack. On. Nice. Uh, what's your phone number? And just call me later and I'll get you. Rescue pack, video. everybody. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, uh, get the rescue card in it. I wish I did. So tell me your number. Here we go. SP3X Moto Vlogs. Watch out for the open pattern, open pattern, open pattern, getting merged into. There it is. You guys know that. You guys have seen that before. He got pushed out because of the bus, honking the horn. He waved it off. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Handled it well. Handled it well. Ed K's. Sun in the eyes of the drivers facing us. You notice the sun or the shadow for us is on our back right in front of us. Open. Oh, side of the vehicle. They didn't see us. Good job with your version of a plan. Okay. We did a great job with that escape path. We planned our ride. You know, always use plan and plan an escape path. Can't see because of that line of sight. You don't see that intersection really, okay? And they can't see us, like I said, because of the sun. They are starting to sneak out, okay? That's that side of the vehicle. And there's a lot of stuff you're having to pay attention to. You know, you're looking ahead. You're looking kind of down. You're looking to the right. Uh, you have sun getting your mirrors, hitting you in the eyes. And then finally, as you see this, what do you do? Put yourself in a better position, okay? Put yourself... Right here, put yourself just a little bit more since there's no vehicles coming out, okay? And that's what he does, right? Yeah, he, he moves over, very good, very good. Kind of glides it right back. Okay, so part of planning, like I said, position, he located it, he's assessing and navigated it. Very good. Do you guys have to deal with this sometimes out there uh, when you're riding, people backing out of parking spaces or backing out of driveways? Has this happened to you? Um, do you know a friend that has crashed? What is a common thing that's happened to you when it comes to a side of the vehicle? And you cannot say intersection and left turners. Give me something unique in the comments. I want to read it. Too slow rider. Okay, let's see what happens. Are you going slow? Oh, I swear I've seen this before. So just based off of that turn, well, I just gave it away. Just based off of the area, how do you think this person crashed? Probably a little bit too fast in the corner. All right. Are we going to be able to see what happens? Make sure you, you remain calm. Ensure your own safety. That's a big one, okay? You don't want to be a victim too. Oh, we're going to see it. So too fast in the corner. Stand it up, stand it up, stand it up. And he just falls over. So left leg could have got injured, but he's standing up. He's got full gear. And like I said, if you're there to rescue that person, make sure you remain calm. Ensure your own safety. So when we saw this, I would definitely not park here. I would keep pulling up and then come into here, park it, and then I'll walk over here to be like, hey, what's up, buddy? You're dumb, dumb. You crashed your bike. What a loser. Just kidding. I wouldn't say that. Although the biker I swear I've seen this. Since he was unable to avoid this was a moto madness. I think this was a moto madness when I saw. He's going to hit a rock. Be very careful. Supposedly in Massachusetts. Yeah, so I have seen this. Uh, this is in Massachusetts. I guess you can do this right on the shoulder. So thank you guys for writing the comments. Is there any other states that you can do this? where you can, you're allowed to be on the shoulder if traffic is like slowed down. Cause that's really interesting. Never heard of that. But always watch out for road surface hazards on the shoulder. Simone Pozan. Going a little fast. Who knows, kilometers per hour, but interesting. See how the light kind of messes with your eyes. Your eyes are also doing this. You know, dilating, constricting, dilating, constricting. Your eyes are quicker than the camera. Ooh. Sided. Is there more than one person on this? Oh, a little bit of a lockup on that rear tire. Got a little bit of fun fun on that one. Uh, person's kind of limping. Okay, so this is the moment we can rescue each other. Now the driver's blocking traffic. That's good. Just kind of watch out for anybody coming around that corner. 
So send somebody around that corner to kind of wave people down until your buddy can get up and going. Okay, but no, this is a pretty good situation. Handled it well. Oh, that's bef that was an after shot. This is the before shot. You know what? I think I have, I did a review on this on Instagram. This looks familiar. That thing is destroyed. I forgot. She said something. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say, uh, this is a female writer. And she said something like it was, it was, she was absolutely fine after this, which is impressive. Yep. That's her. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. This is uh, in a different country, obviously, but I don't remember what she said on the Instagram, which guys, if you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram.com slash Dan and the Fireman. But she said she was absolutely fine. This is a while back. This is a while back, but look, it's impressive. Now, her gear, she was wearing full leathers and helmet and gloves and all that stuff. Yes, it can protect you, but the mechanism of injury when it comes to this kind of uh, crash where you see the motorcycle just split, your body could easily do that too. I mean, we got metal, we got like really strong parts on the motorcycle, right? But our body is just flesh and bone. So imagine us. So she got extremely lucky. But you know what? If you crash, might as well just model with it, right? Might as well get some good footage, get some content. Maybe it can pay for the deductible on that. <laughs> Impressive that she is not hurt. All right, Grey Ghost 619 going pretty fast. Got a little baggie of food right there. Maybe it's taco. Ooh, tacos sound great right now. Mr. Toro. Oh, side of the doggo. No, no, no. That was a good shot. I, I It was a good little pause, a little space bar. Oh, man. I don't like seeing dogs get hurt. I mean, you you run over kid. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I don't like seeing dogs get hurt. Please, doggo, don't be dumb, dumb. All right. Biker is moto. This is moto. All right, red light. Whoa! I was not anticipating that. Okay, so we were applying, it looks like we were applying front brake. I can't see his right hand. I always say he. I mean, 95% of the audience here on Dan and the Farm are, are male. Um, what I'm assuming is that he, he is slant. You saw that, that front end dive right there? So right now, you take a look at where the, um, the, the dash is. You see how it dumps down like that? The weight transferred just there because we applied a lot of brake pressure. Okay, now you see how our, our uh, tires kind of lined up with that white paint? Right there. I'm assuming it's a road surface hazard, too much front brake, just dumped the bike, slipped out from underneath them, panic broke. Ooh, got some, t you got some uh, motorcycle boots, that's good, but you saw the pants get ripped up. Hopefully those are motorcycle pants. Because the, the pant can get ripped, but you have impact protection there. Ooh, his wrist. Guarding the wrist. Oh, wrist sprains are the worst. I got a thumb sprain recently, like a week and a half ago, and it's still kind of recovering. Got a quad lock, baby. Good job. Got a quad lock. Links in the description for a discount. They sponsor the channel. It's the official phone mount of Dan and the Fireman, DDF crew. Cannot downshift stuck in six gar. Uh-oh. Pulling the clutch. Coast it. Urban mode to be safe. Very good. Yeah, pull off to the side and just pull in that clutch. Pull in the clutch, keep it in neutral, shut it off. Or put the side stand down, it might kill the engine, which is it's a Ducati. Okay. Make sure it's fully... What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Are we going to dump the clutch and it's just going to take off? How? What are we... The oops. He just had... It was... His mind was just... Like, why is the gear, why is, oh, the shifter got screwed up. So he got stuck in the gear. I'm more than likely the, the shifter got, it fell off. So you can't shift out of sixth gear because you can't shift. So I see that. And so what you do is you just pull in the clutch. Okay. Well, not like this. You're holding like this. Pulling the clutch all the way. Now it's just basically a neutral. Okay, and you're gonna get off to a safe spot. He did exactly what he was supposed to be doing. I'd rather get off the interstate than stay on it and get over here, perfectly fine. And then just kind of get off and coast. You're coasting the whole time, and you really just you know apply some brake pressure. You can't uh, engine brake, you know, because you have the clutch in. 
just apply some brake pressure and before you know it, you're going 20, you find a shoulder, you're going 10, and now you're just doing some easy slow speed maneuvers and you stop. So it looks like you just got caught. It's just like hanging. Okay, so then when you put the side stand down, it just got caught and it didn't, it didn't catch in. So that sucks. Or he just messed up because his mind is like, what the heck is going on and doesn't do it. Oh, no, it got, it got caught. It got caught. Okay. Notice how his phone didn't fall off. Got a quad lock. Um, thank you guys for watching the bike bikes fall to pieces. Crazy motorcycle moments. Episode 442 from MotoStars. Thank you, MotoStars, for putting it out. But let's go ahead and grab some pizza. Let's go ahead and have some fun. We're not done yet. I'll be seeing you guys real soon. See you later. Bye.